We're going to take a little break, extremely little. Come back with one of the tournament competitors, Mark Halata. He takes on Venetia Spartan, Kiaros in the first round this Friday at the Horseshoe Casino in Hammond, Indiana. Come on back and check it out. First off, uh, you know, I think it had been a while since you'd fought uh, Ron Sparks, and then you went and fought Abe Wagner and picked up a win, so you got back on the winning track, earned your way into the Bellator Heavyweight Tournament for Season 7 coming up. But if you don't mind uh, going back to the Sparks fight, I know you and I had talked about it, and, uh, you know, he caught you pretty early. Uh, was there anything that went wrong in that fight, or was it just a matter of, uh, you know, you get caught sometimes, and then, man, that's all it was? There you go, man. You get caught some time. That's all I was. <laughs> yeah. And uh, he did. He executed like he was supposed to, man. Uh, he said that, uh, when I talked to him, he said I dropped him and he started backing away. So I went ahead and initiated to engage forward towards him, you know. And uh, when I went and uh, got him in his corner, uh, he threw that big left, man. And I was fixing the shoot and I dropped my hand just a little too early and he caught me. So. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so uh, I, I know you uh, took some time off after that, uh, before the Wagner fight. Uh, I guess were you just kind of using it to, you know, get back to training and, you know, work on some things, or were you having trouble finding a fight in between? Uh, I guess why don't you talk about uh, just, the, you know, having the time off? Uh, no, I mean, I just went back to the drawing board, and, uh, you know, me and my strength coaches, and just coaches in general uh, got together, and, you know, they were like, you know, you, you, know you, have, you know you have knockout power, but you know, how long do you want to last in this sport? You know, and I said, I'll last as long as I can. And they're like, well, then you need to start being a smarter fighter because you just can't go afford to go toe-to-toe with uh, some of these guys that are cutting from 300 pounds down to 265. And then by the time you fight with them again, they're, you know, 285 maybe, you know, or whatever it may be. So I just went back to my roots of wrestling and started grappling more. And that's where my strong points are, so... We just want to make sure they're on board, and, you know, I'm, I, I don't have a problem standing up and banging on people, but, you know, I like to retire on my own terms and be in the sport as long as I can, then opposed to somebody telling me I can't do it anymore because I've been knocked out so many times. <laughs> right. I'm just trying to avoid that point as, as strong as possible. Right, right, and, uh, you know, now that you mentioned that, I mean, obviously, I mean, I, I knew you, you know, you played some college football, you are a really good athlete, and you had heavy hands, and then, you know, you went in the Wagner fight, and, uh, you know, you went in there and took him down, and, uh, you know, actually ended up getting the submission, but as far as the takedown, so I guess that was pretty much part of your strategy to, you know, get him down and try to dictate where the fight went. Yeah, exactly, you know, because I've known Abe uh, for a long, long time, and we're supposed to fight for a promotion, early on in our careers but the, they had financial problems so they canceled the show uh, but I mean it was one type of deal as well I knew that he was a, he was a good striker you know and I knew he came from a, a, a kickboxing academy so uh, one of my buddies that knew him that grew up with the guy or was from the same town he was here in the city and trains at our gym and he said that uh, he said that's all he does is do striking Martin he goes you get him on the ground he's going to be a fish out of water and that's all we did. You know, I knew I was fine. I had enough time and preparation to make my takedown stronger, uh, more secure, more comfortable, and win and get my timing down on when to shoot and execute everything. And, uh, you know, it, it all fell on the play. You know, it was just almost, you know, I was telling my coach, I said, that's just weird. It just everything fell on the play like we had practice. You know, I took him down, and uh, it was just almost easy but I mean you can never say that but it was like I said it just everything fell on the play and you know he, he doesn't really have a great t- takedown defense so I kind of set him up and hit him a little bit and he, he put his hands up and I, I just shot in and just took him down and he, they were right he just tried he just tried to pull guard on me and what he did but I wasn't gonna let him contain me there mm-hmm. so yeah, it was actually interesting. You did something that's actually a really good way to break the closed guard. You went for the ankle lock, and I gotta say, uh, uh, you know, the success rate of that in uh, you know mixed martial arts isn't really high. Occasionally, see guys go for it. Usually, they switch to the heel hook. But um, you know, how confident were you when you kind of backed down and went for that lock? Or you know, because obviously, you know, the only problem is if you mess up that hold, then you can pretty easily get swept. And next thing you know, you're on the bottom. Right. Exactly. Uh, that, that's for me. That's like. Uh my go-to move. Everybody sees me, you know, as a, a ground and pound type of guy, or if he gets on your back, you know, you ain't going to get him off, or he's going to get you over a naked choke, or everybody tries to go for the 
for arm bars or, or something like that, triangle chokes or whatever, but it's, it's always the, the small things that people forget about as being a fighter. You know, I can't sit here and just watch fights on TV and when, you know, a guy's on his back and he starts doing up kicks, up kicks, you know, I'm going to try to catch one of them, you know, and, and just try to put it to the side and... And a lot of people don't they don't rotate their legs or whatever, try to do jujitsu or whatever. They just try to they just hold them up there, try to keep you know keep that leg cocked back to kick them in the face or something like that. And when, you know you try to catch one, not like catch one in the face or nothing, but you know once it gets to my side and I can wrap a hold of it and grab it, you know I I got it. You know, so I mean I do a lot in practice. Uh, you know I I do a lot of uh, ankle locks and. Uh, Oh, well, uh, rear neck and chokes. And uh, people just forget about those sometimes, you know. They're more used to the guy throwing a big punch from the top or laying or something like that or uh, trying to get around their guard than opposed to uh, just, it's just real easy. I guess I just see it a lot where people just forget about, you know, they're not going to get it a lot on me. But, you know, what made me want to start trying it is when, you know, like when people would see... Uh, like Ken Shamrock back in the day, that that was one of his best things was ankle lock. So um, I was like, man, you figure out a size that's the last thing you think you would go for was an ankle lock. So yeah. and, and once I started working a lot, it just started to become a part of my game plan every practice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, and I don't mean this in a bad way at all, because like I said, I, you just don't see it that often, so I'll admit you caught me by surprise too, so it probably worked on him, but, uh, you know, talking about training and, uh, you know, being your big athletic guy and, uh, you know, all the guys in this Bellator tournament are, and um, I was just curious, you know, like I said, I was talking to, uh, you know, Eric uh, over at the Academy of Martial Arts, and, you know, they have a really big good heavyweight prospect there, Demorio Dennis, who uh, just recently got a win at King of the Cage, and I know you two have rolled a bit and worked out, and, you know, I'm sure it's a benefit to be able to find guys who are your size and just as big and athletic to kind of, you know, force you to tune up on, you know, just the techniques, and, you know, I, I guess how how hard is it, if at all, to, to find training partners for you once you to, you know, talk about some of the guys that you're able to work with, just to, you know, find people your size that can kind of push you physically? Uh, it's pretty hard, you know, a lot of people will have to, like, uh, I know guys that leave the city area, they go to Tulsa to find people, troll it or go look at gyms up there, some people go down to Dallas, you know, and, and tomorrow, you know, I, I think mean, he's in Colorado for a long time, and then he just hit me up on Facebook, and he said, hey, I'm back in town, you know, can you come roll with me and help me get ready for this fight, you're probably one of the strongest guys I know, and I said, yeah, sure, so we've been, you know, pushing each other ever since. And just that guy, you know, he's, you know, 280, 275, because 265, and I'm 250, so that's one of the type of deals where he, he pushes you, and you always got to have the best guys push you, you know, and, and they have probably, I'd say, three or four heavyweights that weigh at least 240 to, to 280 or whatever. And one of them on you every minute or every two or three minutes, it's just, it's, it's a lot, you know, so I always want to be pushed by the best to, to, feel like I got something out of the practice opposed to just going and just working through the motions and whatnot. So, I mean, it, it does build your confidence extremely high because you, you never know what opponent you're going to draw, especially in a tournament. You know, my opponent switched three times for this tournament. Yeah, yeah, and actually, so, actually it's uh, funny you brought that up because obviously the guy you're fighting now at least uh, scheduled is uh, Vinicius Carols. I'm probably butchering his name, but uh, we'll just call him by his nickname, Spartan. Uh, but uh, obviously, people know him from the UFC, and we can talk about his history there. But uh, first off, just as far as you know, you're talking about, you know, you've had opponent changes in the end. A lot of the guys are, are more of the ilk that you mentioned. They're the bigger, bulkier guys that cut down to 265. And he's actually kind of the opposite of a lot of the field. He's a taller, lankier guy, but he's, you know, probably uh, about your weight, maybe a tad less. So, um, you know, what adjustments have you made just knowing that you're going in there against a taller, lankier? guy not necessarily one of those you know big brutish you know massive dudes like ron sparks uh i just uh, we'll start working head movement a lot you know because he's he's gonna have reach on me i know that you know the guy's six six or something like that uh so i started working a lot of a lot of foot drills a lot of speed drills to just time my shots you know to do whatever i can to uh suffocate him where he can't work those long reaches and just you know kind of like to me he kind of like reminds me of like not really like a John Jones because John Jones is very, very athletic. I'm not saying this guy isn't, you know, but, uh, 
when I watched his fight against Rob Rock, you know, I mean, he gassed out in the second round, and I was kind of shocked that he, he gassed out like that. But, uh, you know, I don't want to give him the chance to, you know, knowing he's a kickboxer, and every kickboxer I've ever worked with, they're not going to, you know, come at you and just throw, throw a, a jab or something out there. They're going to throw kind of like two to three punch combinations on you. You know, and, uh, and that's what he was doing in some of his videos I've seen. So for me, it's, it's me pushing the pace on him because him being 230 or 235 or, or whatever it may be, but at 6'6", six, six, that's not super big. Yeah, and... Uh, that's, that, that's definitely not a Rob Sparks. So for me, it's just to get around his range and uh, engage to either take him down or catch him in a clinch to make him work harder because I know he's not going to be as strong as me. Yeah, and I, I don't want you to, you don't have to give away your game plan, but uh, certainly uh, if you do take him down and uh, try to use your size and, you know, you know, get him to the mat, I'm, you know, I'm sure that, you know, you'll have an opportunity to do that. But then there's always the aspect of, as you know, when you got a really tall, lanky guy, long legs, usually the most dangerous thing is something like the triangle choke from the bottom. Uh, you know, is that something you've been drilling on, preparing for? If you do take him down, that's probably something you ought to look for. Yeah, you know, the triangle chokes, um, you know, if he, he puts me in guard, he's going to kind of sweep me, or because or, he is so long, and he's going to have a he's going to have pretty strong leverage game on me, too. You know, but for me, it's just to, to make him work and take him out of his comfort zone, because to me, I believe that his comfort zone is, is standing up. So I would rather him be on the ground with me than opposed to me standing up with him, because that's just going to make me work harder, as opposed to doing what I need to do or, or whatever I have to do to, to get the win. So, I mean, it's just one type of deal where uh, mm -hmm. that's, for me, it's just getting past his range is, is the first part of the game plan. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, he's he, he tries to stay away and just keep punching and punching, you know, or, but, and he's got, he's got strong leg kicks, you know. He doesn't do a lot of lower kicks. He kicks up high, you know, but and I, don't, I don't blame him for that, but yeah, I, do. I work a lot of submissions that why I think that he may get me, you know, or, uh, you know, straight arm walks and stuff like that if I sit in his guard too long. So my goal is to try to keep him busy on the ground to mm -hmm. do whatever I can to gas him out. Okay, and my last question about this fight in particular, uh, I know it's sometimes a touchy subject in this sport because, you know, it's a lot of, uh, you know, martial arts background and, you know, personal honor and tradition and just the idea of, you know, going in there and, and it's a dangerous sport too, so you got to respect your opponent and the sport in general and, you know, there's the issue of performance enhancing drugs, it's become a, uh, you know, it's, well, it's been around for a while, but it's really, you know, hitting the headlines more as the sport grows, so as a fighter yourself, um, you know, as you know, the one performance he had in the UFC, he did test positive and ended up getting cut. For you, what's it like going up against a fighter that you know is uh, tested positive before? Uh, it really doesn't bother me none, you know. Uh, it, you should, I like to think that, you know, uh, I like to see that they are strict, strict enough like that, but I think he would really think twice, you know, about doing it again when he gets to fight at this level of competition. Uh, you know, this isn't just a old backyard show. It, you know, this is going to be live on TV. Uh, I think that he would literally think twice about it, even though, you know, it is in the back of my head that maybe, uh, you know, he, he's, he's a last minute replacement. So even though he's just an instructor at his school, you know, it's one of those type of deals where, like, he's only had two weeks to prepare, three weeks to prepare for this fight. Uh... So, I mean, yeah, that's in the back of my head. Like, well, maybe he's going to get desperate not know it. Not only that, but this is going to be his first fight back since he got cut from the UFC mm -hmm. back in 2010. Right. So, yeah, I mean, it's in the back of my head that he's probably doing something, you know, but uh, I can't let that affect my game plan what I need to get done. Mm-hmm. Right, and, and lastly, uh, you know, just talking about the Bellator field, uh, it has changed around a bit, but uh, besides uh, Vinicius, there's, uh, you know, of course, Eric Prindle, Tiago Santos, uh, a bunch of other tough dudes, especially Tiago Santos, who really, uh, you know, came on the scenes uh, and really impressed some people last season, despite his uh, controversy near the end of the tournament. But now that the rumors, or, or not rumor, but now that basically it's announced that uh, the champion Cole Conrad is retiring, I was curious what you think of just the overall heavyweight division. I mean, they've brought in some new faces in Bellator, and I mentioned Santos. Uh, do, do you think the division is still pretty strong right now? Yeah, I think it's still pretty strong, you know. I mean, it's, it's hard to, to not sit here and, uh, 
I say that it's not, but like, you know, you get a lot of veterans that have competed in Strike Force and UFC, et cetera, you know. Uh, but for me, it's like, I think that this year we'll probably all come in a little more hungrier for, for that title shot or to see who's going to get it now that Conrad is gone. You know, I think that it's going to put a little more fuel to the fire that that belt's just there waiting for somebody to come get it. So I think you'll see a lot more, uh, a little more, let me see here, I guess uh, more blood, sweat, you know, going into each fight just to get the, get the advance to go to the next round. Right. And, and actually, so, uh, I think, uh, no, actually, I did forget. I, I did have one question I forgot to ask you. Um, I, I know the heavyweight division is a bit different with the tournament style because you know these fights don't tend to last too long because you got so many uh, you know heavy hitting guys in there. But um, you know, just as far as uh, even you know, j- j- you've been in Bellator, the Bellator cage twice, but also been in a tournament before. Do you think that experience? helps at all because i've talked to other guys i talked about you know you when you go into that tournament for the first time and you know you get eliminated it you know it does kind of help you focus on what you need to do to better prepare the next time around oh yeah you know i mean all the all the nerves and everything has calmed down now that uh you know uh i got to fight more than just just the tournament you know uh this year it's uh one of those type of deals where uh, I, at last time it was like I fought for Bellator and then I had to go find some more small shows and then I got picked up by Bellator and, and the first time was the tournament I'm like wow you know this is this is wild so and I mean I would like to fight more than once a year other than just the tournament you know like when I got the chance to fight Abe Wagner mm-hmm. you know I would like to fight more than once a year you know for for Bellator other than just the tournament. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, it, it helps calm nerves, but, you know, it's, you're getting more comfortable, you know, they don't forget who you are. It's just more, become more of like a home-based atmosphere every time you show up to the hotel and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. You know, it's always class act, and they always treat you really good and stuff like that. So, I mean, yeah, and, you know, you're uh, meeting all kinds of new fighters and stuff like that that come through that promotion and everything. So, it's it's my nerves are calming down when you know you meet poor people that recognize that it's just a sport like you do mm-hmm. you know so I mean it's, it, to me it's like a home away from home from what I used to fight in all the time for C3 mm-hmm Right. Well, like I said, I appreciate you doing the show once again, especially on late notice. Uh, once again, that's Mark Collada going to be fighting in the opening round of Bellator Season 7's heavyweight tournament starting uh, this Friday, October 5th. It'll be on uh, national TV with either MTV2 or Epix. But, Mark, thanks a lot. Like we do with all of our guests, uh, if you want to you know, thank anyone, uh, sparring partners or, or sponsors or whoever, go ahead. Uh, thank my sponsors, my agent, you know, uh, that take good care of me, all my sparring partners out there at uh, AMA, DeMario, and Myron, uh, Brian, uh, and all my grappling partners at the American Top Team, uh, you know, my strength and conditioning coaches here at CrossFit OKC, uh, you know, they all put a lot of hard work into me, so, I mean, I'm going to go out there not just for myself, but for my teammates as well, so, it's going to be a good show. All right, great. Well, uh, good luck on Friday, and hope we can have you on again and uh, have you on here in the show future, and uh, hopefully not as long of a layoff as we had the last time after the Sparks fight. Hi, man. I appreciate it. All right. Have a good one. Bye.